These young Swedes are on their way to an outing in the country. Just now, they have their minds on things like camping and swimming. All the same, they're also on their way. What is it like, this country of theirs? Well, for one thing, it has a history so long that medieval castles are comparatively a modern touch. Sweden has 4,500 miles of coastline, a fact of tremendous importance in the work and play of the people. Both as expert technicians. What she's adjusting is an anti-aircraft gun sight. Professor Ronström, a distinguished biochemist of Stockholm University, and his laboratory assistants. It is in the farming country that we still find Sweden's most important industry. In spite of her north graphical position and the small area of farmland in proportion to the entire area of the country, Sweden has done so much in agricultural research and experimentation that she is self-supporting as to the principal foodstuffs. About a fourth of all the Swedish people derive their living from agriculture. With mining machinery, prepare yourself now for a slight surprise. It is from the museum at Falun, which honey such models of the mining equipment of former days. At Kiruna, in the Swedish province of Lapland, is one of the greatest iron ore deposits in the world. Here, nearly a hundred miles above the Arctic Circle, is the source of an industry vital to the country, veritable iron mountains, with generous yields of high-grade ore. The supply is so huge that it will last for centuries to come. The Swedes have been smelting iron ore for many years. About one-fourth of all the country's workers have jobs in the metal and machine industries. Iron workers on their days off are among Sweden's best soccer players. This sport is a prime favorite, as it is nearly everywhere in Europe. The men who fell trees in the Swedish forests are engaged in something which apparently will go on forever because the national reforestation law is rigidly enforced. All cut over land is promptly replanted and the forestry reserve should last indefinitely. Mealtime for the foresters. And anyone who has ever chopped down a tree knows what it does to the appetite. The Swedish rivers seem to have been specially designed by nature for floating logs down to the sawmills, which are usually at the mouths of the streams. Every year, millions of logs make the journey. The foresters have somewhat perilous work to do when the logs jam up in the streams. That has happened now, and these men are on their way to do something about it. This 
this amiable veteran is a sort of traffic policeman, sorting the logs as they enter the mill. This man has one of the few sitting down jobs in the lumber industry. He and his fellow workers are parts of an immensely important activity, for lumber and wood products form about half of Sweden's export trade. The Swedes have had centuries of experience with trees and lumber and with whatever it's possible to do with wood. Our friend here represents a peasant craft which has a long tradition. In a Stockholm store, the little wooden figure acquires a new owner. On another floor, the glass department. Swedish glass has become famous the world over. From the moment when the artist sets out to make the design, on through various processes, all of them in the hands of highly trained workers, Swedish cut glass represents a handicraft carried into the realm of art. In the evening, the glass blowers, still blowing, and some of their fellow workers, make this their recreation. Over on the west coast at Gothenburg, these Swedes are sightseeing in a very pleasant way along the waterways of their country's second city and principal port. Gothenburg was planned in 1619 by experts from Holland, summoned for the purpose by King Gustavus Adolphus, hence the system of canals on the Dutch model. Now they are approaching the yards which make Sweden one of the world's important shipbuilding countries. Not much shipbuilding going on at this hour, it's lunchtime. From the earliest times, the Swedes have been sailors and builders of ships and boats. Here they are at work on the largest passenger liner ever built in Sweden. The fathers of these men and their grandfathers and their great-grandfathers all did this work too, or something like it. We're still on the west coast, so let's visit some of the folk in a fishing village. It's Sunday, no fishing today. Even though it's the Sabbath, they spend some time getting ready for tomorrow's work out where the fish are waiting for them. Monday morning, back to work. These men earn their living in another of the important Swedish industries. Every one of their fellow citizens, man or woman, must have fish to eat often in order to be a normal, happy Swede. And the export trade in fish and fish products is large. The sea to the west abounds in cod and herring. Sometimes the fishing boats range as far from home as the fishing grounds around England and Iceland.
the same fish? In any case, this one is now approaching its ultimate destiny because it's for sale in the Stockholm fish market. The open air market is typical. The Stockholm housewife does a good deal of her shopping for food out of doors. That fish is now bound for the kitchen. It'll be cooked just right, too. The Swedes know how. Now that we're in Stockholm, suppose we take a ride in the elevator of the Katarina Tower. Stockholmers use the tower as a convenient way to reach the heights in the southern part of the city, and tourists use it for sightseeing purposes. When we get up there, we'll have a good general view of the Swedish capital. she is, the Queen of the Baltic. Of Sweden's seven million people, about one million live in Stockholm and its suburbs. They have one of the world's pleasantest cities as the place in which they live and do their work. Here we meet some of the Swedes who keep the city's wheels turning. Surely that describes the traffic policeman there. His post is on Kungsgatan, Stockholm's main street. It's all right to observe the famous town hall in the distance, but in this typical street scene, the thing to notice is the cyclists. Hundreds of thousands of Stockholmers pedal their way to and from their jobs. For those who have no bikes, or who don't like bikes, or whose bicycling days may be over, there are other ways of getting about. Transportation in Stockholm seems very comfortable, doesn't it? These girls are on a streetcar which is bound for the suburbs. The Swedish demand for reading matter of all kinds is tremendous. Near the Royal Dramatic Theatre is this popular newsstand where magazine buyers find not only the many Swedish publications, but, as you can see if you look closely, some that come from America. The cyclists again, only this time it's Saturday and these Stockholmers are on their way out of town. To meet some of the Swedes, you have to go where the yachts are. The coastal waters are ideal for this sport, which is immensely popular. Whether he's well-to-do or of modest means, every true Swede owns a boat of some sort if he can possibly manage it. It's in the blood. Racing in Sweden has a pleasantly informal air. We even found on the day of our visit that one of the jockeys was a woman. Once every year, the people of Stockholm converge upon their handsome stadium for the colorful celebration of Flag Day. This is their chance to express their devotion to their country, and it's our chance to meet the Swedes upon a significant and heartwarming occasion. Military attachés of foreign countries join the Stockholmers in watching the march past and the salute to the colors. The 
The marchers represent the armed services and various civilian organizations from many parts of the country. in Sweden's long past and with high hopes for her future, they salute... <laughs>